A few years ago, when I was deciding what I wanted to study for my undergraduate, I was considering studying something to do with data, be it data science, data analysis, or data engineering. And one of my favorite YouTube channels at the time, since I was also considering something science-y, was Domain of Science. And they post really cool map of videos like this. So I was hoping they would make a map of data science video so that I could understand what I was getting into. But it's been five years and... This map of computer science video is the closest that we've gotten. So I decided I would step in and do a worse job than they would and make my own map of data science video. And now that I actually work in the data industry, I was thinking maybe a video like this would help some of you decide whether, th whether this is something you'd fancy. The data world has so much crossover and overlap, it can be at times difficult to put it into strict categories. The three most commonly used, however, are data engineering, data science, which might be the most popular, and data analysis. These three categories are distinct, but have so much overlap that often data people find themselves doing a bit of each, unless they work at a big company that can afford to have specialists in each area. The data engineer. The temptation when thinking about data is thinking about all the cool models you can make and how you could analyze the data and all that lovely stuff, but all of this comes much later down the timeline. The best way to explain this might be a little example. Imagine you work in the 1950s and your boss wants you to find out what customers think of the business. And then you go into the meeting and your boss is like, well, what do the customers think? Of course you don't know because you haven't collected the data. You haven't, for example, made a survey and had either your customers fill in certain boxes on what they think about it. So you could say 71% of customers are able to find whatever product they want or think the customer service is good. And just a side note, this tabular form is usually considered as st structured data. Another way is you can have customers write a short paragraph and then somebody else reads it manually and gets a feel for what they're saying, which we can do today with sentiment analysis. And this would count as unstructured data. So long story short, the role of the data engineer is to extract data from different sources and then transform it into a format that can then be used by data analysts and data scientists. A common acronym that you'll see when dealing with data engineering is ETL, which stands for Extract, Transform, Load. That pretty much sums up of what the core of data engineering is. So let's say a company is selling its products on Amazon and wants to know what customers think of their product. Step one would be to extract the data. This might be, for example, scraping all the reviews of the product from the website. Step two would be to transform it, which could be turning the comments into a tabular form removing useless stop words like the and at and other words that don't tell us anything and also stuff like removing typos and what have you. And then lastly, load it onto some sort of storage system, usually a SQL or NoSQL compatible data warehouse. Then leave it to the data scientists and analysts on what to do next. A lot of skills are required for data engineers. The ability to communicate with people along the data lifespan to understand what data they would like and in what format. But IT skills are, of course, most important, and knowing languages like Python, as well as knowing how to work with APIs would be useful, but SQL and NoSQL languages would also come in extremely useful alongside other relational database management software. Now let's look at the data science portion of this. The data scientist builds on what the data engineer has provided, i.e. the now structured data. Their role is to get useful insights that can help to drive business decisions usually with the overall aim of increasing revenue or improving customer experience and what have you, which of course would then serve to increase the revenue. So depending on the business, the exact insights that are needed can be gotten from the business leaders, or if the data team has more autonomy, they can experiment a little bit more and decide what they think is useful. And a lot of the work data scientists do is more predictive in nature. This is using data acquired in the past and then using that to try and accurately predict the future behaviors or identify business opportunities. And to do a lot of these predictions involves building at times complex models that take data as input and then output variables that would help you with said predictions. So going back to our old timey 1950s example in the meeting room, your boss says, we're pretty much at capacity, serving as many customers as possible, providing as much value as possible, so our revenue has pretty much maxed out. But I like money, and I want to make more. And you, the old-timey data scientist, are like, Sir, actually, we are at capacity if we stay at the current location. But if we move to, a le but if we move to location Y, there is 50% more foot traffic per day, 
And although our rent would go up by 15%, and we have to pay a 5% penalty for leaving our current location early, our model says in 8 months we'll break even from the move, and from then on the company will be making 12% more revenue per month. So they have used data from past days comparing the foot traffic and combined that with business savvy in order to provide value to the business. So data scientists require quite a few skills. So for example, you need to have excellent maths and statistical skills in order to have the logic behind the models, as well as programming skills in R and or Python to implement a lot of the statistical models. Although there are a lot of modeling techniques that don't need as much stats. But just as important is the business savvy, to know how to use your skills to make the difference. So in our example, it will be knowing that the location makes a massive difference in the revenue potential of a company. So finally, what does the data analyst do? So where the data scientist is more on the predictive end of things, data analysts can be more on the descriptive end of things. That is, seeing and reporting what has happened in the past, and identifying what business decisions may have led to this, and seeing what you can learn from it. So of the three, data analysts have to be the most business savvy, or work the most closely with business decision makers, because the data analyst will often be helping them to make these business decisions. So it's not just about being business savvy, you need to have a deeper understanding of your domain, to know what generally works and doesn't work within that specific domain. So the data analyst has to know the key performance indicators, or KPIs, which are basically important targets that the business wants to hit. So they need the ability to take that data that our lovely engineer has structured for us and then query it to find out the information relating to your KPIs and what have you. And if you're a good data analyst, you'll probably go beyond this to do some EDA to look at other potential problems and opportunities within the business. And a big part of being a data analyst is feeding back the findings to a potentially non-data savvy audience. So this often involves creating nice visualizations for stakeholders and decision makers so they recognize what's going on quickly and then make decisions about it. So skills that you need as a data analyst are things like business and domain knowledge, decent statistical skills as well as more technical skills such as SQL, Microsoft Excel, NoSQL and so much more. But always remember that all data people will most likely have to be able to do at least some of each one but the difference is how much skill or concentration you have in each one. And that is the map of data science. Well, at least in the eyes of this newbie. And listen, a lot of you watching might know more about this stuff than I have. So if I made any mistakes or if you wanna add anything else, drop it down in the comments. Let's learn from each other. And if you're new around here, I'm Data Nash. I'm a data newbie from a non-tech background who's hoping to document his journey from knowing next to nothing about data to hopefully one day being a great data scientist. So if you wanna join the journey, consider hitting subscribe and maybe you'll learn a few things on the journey as well. Till the next one though, peace.